This NBA season's far from over, and we still got a lot left to see. But with the rumors that have surrounded the NBA, and some of the top players for the entire year, or even longer, we can only wonder what's in store for this offseason. With all the big names that are free agents, all the teams ready to sign them, or make trades to try to win their team a championship. We can only think about the moves that are going to go down, and how the entire league is going to look next year. So we're looking at 14 moves that should happen this offseason. Before we do though, I gotta mention two big free agents that I don't think are going anywhere, and that's Clay and Kimba. And that's gonna definitely affect what the Warriors do, and unless major trades are made, it's gonna leave Charlotte with not much room at all to make any free agent signings. But with that said, let's move on to Kevin Durant. KD to the Knicks is one of those rumors that no one really knows where it came from or how it started. Kind of like the LeBron to the Lakers rumors that went around for a couple years, before he actually ended up signing there. The rumors turned out to be right, and I'd say the same thing's gonna happen with Durant, and him signing with the Knicks at the end of this season is one of the most likely offseason moves, because Golden State doesn't realistically have the money to keep him for the amount that he wants. And unless they plan on taking a DeMarcus Cousins contract, they can only either keep Clay or Durant. And like I I said I don't think Clay's going anywhere. But Kevin Durant really needs to go off on his own anyways, so his career isn't always shadowed by the fact that he can only win with a super team. And from a talent standpoint, the Knicks don't have any players besides Dennis Smith Jr. to attract KD and another free agent, but they will have a ton of cap space, Dennis Smith Jr., and with how things are looking, they'll most likely have Zion Williamson. So it's turning into a perfect storm for this rumor to come true, Kyrie Irving. After the last season, there were rumors that Kyrie Irving would also be joining the Knicks next year. But that was until earlier this season, when he verbally committed to re-signing with the Boston Celtics. But then came the plot twist on October 4th, when less than 24 hours after the Knicks cleared cap space to sign two max contracts, Irving was asked about his future and said, At the end of the day, I'm gonna do what's best for me and my career. I don't owe anyone shit. And then said, Ask me again July 1st. Which, unsurprisingly, immediately brought back all the rumors that he would be the second max player to sign with them, along with Durant, or maybe even even Anthony Davis. And after going back on his word like this, it's pretty convincing. And then this video just showed up that people are saying is Kyrie telling Durant there's two max spots. It's time. Now, I don't think the audio is clear enough for anyone to tell if he's actually saying that or not, but it's only been heating these rumors up. We saw what Kyrie could do with LeBron, so now we might just get to see what he can do with KD next season. But speaking of LeBron, that also brings up the point of Kyrie's call to apologize to LeBron in January. After leaving the Cavs in 2017 to step out from under LeBron's shadow, Kyrie's been forced to be a leader of some of the most talented young players in the league on the Celtics, which led to him finally seeing things from LeBron's point of view. So he apologized for being that young player that wanted to have everything at his fingertips. And getting this new perspective and being able to see things from LeBron's point of view may have been just enough for him to regret leaving James and wanting to team back up now that he needs help in LA. It's a lot less likely than him going to the Knicks, but there is still a small chance Kyrie Irving ends up as a Laker. And then we have Anthony Davis. After the Pelicans rightfully fired Dell Dimps, there's a big chance that the proposed Lakers trade does go down and they send all their young assets to New Orleans in exchange for AD. And I think that's a much better offer than anything else they could get. But what we also learned from all that nonsense back and forth at the deadline was the rumor of Davis going to the Celtics in return for Jason Tatum. Davis said he'd be willing to play for Boston, and rumors have said that Jason wouldn't mind being the face of the Pelicans franchise. It would compromise Boston's long-term future, but it's looking like they're coming up on a time where they may have to choose if they want to win now or build towards their future, and this would be the deciding factor. And I think this is most likely to happen only if the Pelicans don't take the Lakers deal and if Kyrie Irving actually resigns there. But it really all depends on Kyrie's decision. If he leaves to New York, Boston probably doesn't make this Davis trade. If KD doesn't go to New York, the Knicks have the potential to trade for Davis. If Kyrie and KD go to New York together, then AD has the best chance of ending up as a Laker next year. Kawhi Leonard When Kawhi Leonard was doing everything he could to get out of San Antonio, his main preferred destination was his hometown team of the Lakers. He wanted to live and play in LA, but after the Spurs refused to trade him there, he's been a member of the Raptors. Now unless they dominate the playoffs and win a championship, 
I think he ends up being a Clipper next year because he's made it clear that he doesn't want to play on the Lakers anymore behind LeBron and he'd rather go and play for the Clippers. And the fact that he just recently bought a $13 million home in San Diego only fuels those rumors. Alright, sure he bought a house in Toronto too, but he needed somewhere to live while he played there. Then there's DeMarcus Cousins. Right now DeMarcus Cousins is playing solid for the Golden State Warriors, and while he might not ever fully return to his former self, certain teams should definitely be interested in him in the offseason. If he can still manage to give a team around 15 and 10 a night when he's made a full return, with his passing and his shooting ability, that's all a team would need from him. I still don't see him getting any huge contract offers, but I think that the teams that will offer him the most money would be either the Clippers or the Lakers. The Lakers aren't going to have a center on their roster by the offseason, and they're going to need all the star power they can get when next season comes around. So Cousins could be their guy to either start or come off the bench. And the same goes for the Clippers. If they plan on signing Kawhi Leonard, they're going to need to give him a better center than Zubak. So if teams still aren't offering Cousins big money, it only makes sense that a playoff team without a center goes after him. And speaking of centers, there's Nikola Vucevic. And even though the man made the all-star team, I still feel like he's been underappreciated by a lot of people for how good he's been. And that combined with the fact that he's in his prime and an unrestricted free agent this year means that he's going to get offered big money by a new team. Now he could easily end up on the Clippers or the Lakers for the reasons we mentioned earlier, but we're not going to focus everything on those two teams. But either way, a team that I think has an even better chance of signing him is the Mavericks. After they traded away Harrison Barnes to clear cap space, there's already been rumors that have come out and said that they are going to pursue Vucevic in the offseason to form an international big three. A move like this would give them shooting ability at all five positions and could lead them right into the playoffs if they're able to fill out the rest of their roster. Another guy that could end up helping a playoff team is Jimmy Butler. Even though Philly has come out and said that they would like to keep both Tobias and Jimmy Butler, I don't think there's any real chance that that's possible. And I can see them keeping Harris over Jimmy when it comes down to it. And if that does turn out to be the case, then where would Jimmy go? Well again, if we're not focusing only on the big market teams, I could see him going to a team like the Pacers to play alongside Victor Ol depot. They've both got similar defensive minded styles and are both team leaders. So it might not work out or it could turn out to be great because Indiana has a lot of cap space this offseason and they could definitely use a player like him in their system. But if that doesn't work out, he could possibly end up on a team like the Mavs if they don't end up getting Vucevic. With guys like Luka, Hardaway Jr. and Kristaps, having Jimmy Butler to hold down the defensive end of things would be just what this team needs. But then again, Dallas doesn't have a great history with players with big egos. Right now there's a lot of possibilities where Jimmy could end up, but these are the two that I'm going with. Comment your thoughts down below on where you think Butler might sign. And we can move on to the next player in DeAndre Jordan. So DeAndre's definitely not going to the Mavs or the Clippers because... Yeah, but I can see the Spurs or Lakers going after him. The Spurs definitely need more depth at certain positions if they want to make a good run in the playoffs with DeMar DeRozan and LaMarcus Aldridge. And DeAndre would be a great fit with Aldridge because he could play down low and protect the paint while Aldridge stretches the floor. But I don't know how likely this would be with their salary situation. So if it's not them, I'd say he ends up with the Lakers. LeBron James has had a history of success with traditional big men throughout all of his finals appearances. And always having a guy down low like DeAndre to pass the ball off to would be a perfect fit. And while we're speaking of big men, we can look at Nikola Mirotic. Right now couldn't be a better fit on the Milwaukee Bucks, but sadly for them, when they have to give Chris Middleton a near max contract this offseason, they're not going to have money to re-sign him. So I can see the Utah Jazz signing him to a long term deal. They've been looking for that next big player to push them to that next level in the playoffs, and Miritich can help them do that. Plus they've been trying to get him on the team since he played on the Bulls, and even tried to make a trade for him at the deadline this year. So this is their opportunity to finally replace Derek Favors in the starting lineup, and give the team some more much needed needed shooting. And then there's Derrick Rose. Now with how Rose has played this year, he's going to get a much better offer this summer than what the Timberwolves are going to be able to pay him. And there's two teams that are in need of a point guard that want to win now, and that's the Pacers and the Jazz. Ricky Rubio's contract's up after this year for Utah, and they're going to want to fill that spot. They tried to get Mike Conley in a trade, but getting D. Rose would be even better for them. It would let Rose shine as a starter, and himself and Mitchell would be a great duo. Plus, whoever signs him could possibly get him for cheaper than he's really worth. If that does so happen to be the Pacers though, they'd finally have a better point guard than Darren Collison. 
both teams desperately need the spot filled, and I think both of them are going to go after them the hardest, so it'll be interesting to see which one he ends up signing with. And speaking of point guards, there's Terry Rozier, who's going to be a restricted free agent at the end of this season. And with the fact that there's no way that the Celtics are going to really be able to match any other offers that a player as good as himself is going to get, he's without a doubt ending up on a new team next year. And I think that team's got to be the Orlando Magic. Even though they acquired Markel Fultz at the trade deadline, that's still a risk and a big work in progress. So I can see them throwing big money at a young point guard like Rozier to lead their team. With the potential he's shown on the Celtics, and approval from a guy like Kyrie Irving saying he's a starting guard in this league, he can be exactly what the Magic need going forward. And sticking with point guards, next is Lonzo Ball. There's no doubt that if AD doesn't get traded to the Lakers, it looks like LA is going to find other deals for their young guys. And there's been mutual interest with the Phoenix Suns, who even though they have Tyler Johnson now, still desperately need a point guard. And Lonzo would be the perfect fit alongside Devin Booker, because Devin can go off on offense and Lonzo can hold down the defensive end. The only thing here is I'm not too sure what Phoenix would offer in return, but I'm sure the Lakers would take a deal that gives them more cap room. And worst case scenario, the Lakers end up keeping a great defensive minded point guard for next year. And then the last point guard on the list is Isaiah Thomas. Now if Indiana misses out on D Rose, I could see them going after Isaiah to fill that spot with a guy with experience. IT's another guy that they'll be able to get for cheap, and still has big upside if he stays healthy. If not the Pacers though, he could really end up on the Wizards, who still have Bradley Beal on the roster, and with Wall out, they're gonna need someone to fill a spot in the lineup. I really think the Wizards just need to rebuild now, but depending on what they decide to do, Isaiah could be a good option for them. But since he's probably going to be so cheap, a team like the Bucks could definitely use him. Because they're probably going to have to lose out on Eric Bledsoe, maybe Malcolm Brogdon too, when they give Middleton his max contract. So unless they want George Hill starting, which they don't, they need IT more than anyone. So if I had to choose somewhere, the Bucks are where I'd say he'd end up. And last on the list is Tobias Harris. Like I mentioned earlier, I think Tobias stays with Philly, but if for some reason he doesn't, he could go to two teams that we mentioned earlier, which are the Mavs or the Jazz. Both teams have openings at either forward position, and Harris can bring instant offense. Out of the two, I think he's got a better chance of ending up in Utah, assuming they don't get Nikola Mirotic, who we mentioned earlier. But Harris would fit in great as a power forward for them. They'd need to make a couple trades to clear some salary space, but if he leaves Philly, I think that's where he ends up. And I was going to include moves for Bradley Beal too, but it really just depends on what Washington decides to do, and if he does get moved, there's a ton of places he could really end up. So instead, you guys comment your thoughts on his situation, and on what you thought of the rest of the video. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next video.